Welcome to the poetry vlog. Um, today I'm taking a slightly different approach for a variety of reasons. Um, one is I had a student that had emailed me and I neglected to respond in a timely fashion about Kendrick Lamar. Um, and then the other reason is because I'm doing a thing in these vlogs so far that I also make the mistake of doing in my scholarship and my teaching, which is I'm starting with the ideas and ending with the texts. Um, and while that works for the way my brain works, it does not work for the way most other people's brains work because you're like why are you talking about all these abstract ideas and all of a sudden it gets thrown a text so we're going to start with the texts first with only a little bit of context around the text and then i'll go from there so the text today is per jasper vu's request um jasper hi excited to finally respond to you and i'm so sorry for the delay it got lost in the summer email slog um so for the rest of you, Jasper had emailed me asking about a particular set of lyrics in a Kendrick Lamar song. Sing about the song's name is "Sing About Me and Dying Thirst." Um, and for context on why Jasper asked me about this song in particular, I um, part of my dissertations on Kendrick Lamar's music video "All Right." Are we gonna be all right? Um, it's actually a significant part of the middle of the dissertation. So I mentioned this in class, and we also talked about close reading skills, and one of the core tenets of my belief about poetry is that it is also pop culture. Pop culture is poetry. And I think Kendrick Lamar, especially after the award winning that he's gone through, the sort of recognition that's way overdue, that his work is literary, it is poetry, um, and it's doing incredible things in the world. Um, that's really come to the forefront. That was a messy sentence, I'm sorry, but you get the idea. So I put off reply, if I'm totally honest, because this was a song I hadn't heard. Like, I'm not a proclaimed, um, and I would never call myself a Kendrick Lamar expert by any means. I'm more of a Kendrick Lamar from a distance observer, where I'm like, wow, this guy's doing some really cool shit. Um, and I was excited to get to put it in my dissertation. So the song that Jasper sent me, I hadn't even heard, which is something I probably shouldn't admit, but one of my goals here is to be totally honest and not pretentious. Um, and it's Sing About Me, I'm Dying of Thirst. This selection that Jasper selected is, is thus, quote, Sometimes I look in a mirror and ask myself, am I really scared of passing away? If it's today, I hope to hear a cry out from heaven so loud it can water down a demon with the Holy Ghost till it drown in the blood of Jesus. End quote. Um, and that poll, I listened to the whole thing, read through the lyrics, took a couple quick notes, and then, as with all of these podcasts, podcasts or vlogs or whatever, I'm going to be mostly riffing um, and giving you my general insight on it. So I, I read that section, and Jasper asked me to look at that section in particular. I think it's really important, though, to look at that section in relation to the song as a whole. So I've linked in the bio, and then I'm going to try my first time to annotate the video by putting a link in this video to the um, to a YouTube upload of the song that also has all the lyrics written out. And then I'll give you a quick summary. I jotted down some notes while I was watching. I'll give you a quick idea of my interpretation of the song at large. I'll dig a little further into the selection that Jasper's requested, including rereading it again, because um, there's a lot of words in this particular song. So remind you where we're focusing. And then we'll kind of wrap up by giving some ideas about how you can approach close readings. My goal is to keep this at 10 minutes, which means it'll hopefully be under 15 minutes something you'll learn from me if you take my classes or if you're just paying attention here as I say one time you can always add five minutes to it because I'm just wordy and I go on and on sorry about that you can always fast forward that's the beauty of YouTube unlike my class um all right so sing about me I'm dying of thirst um I read this song let me look at my notes right um it's contemplating the precarity of black life and the desire to live beyond death through legacy um if black life is defined by the parameters of death and there's many scholars that talk about this right like lisa casho for instance on social death um it can be limiting because that actually recreates the idea of blackness as death even in your awareness of how historically black people have been killed, right, or enslaved, or continue to be prematurely exposed to precarity in everyday life, like with Flint lead poisoning or Detroit water shutoffs, as two of my primary research examples. You can look at police brutality and so forth. Something that that seems to do, though, is it, if we go back to Grant Smith yesterday, recreates this idea of calling black people already dead, and it kind of prescribes this idea of what counts as living and what doesn't, and sort of predetermines and predooms people to death, right? So it's really complicated, because you want to acknowledge the ongoing violence against black people and black life and the type of social death and actual death that's laid on to that, right? But you also want to be like, hey, 
that's violent too. Like, black people are living, black people are real, duh, right? It's super fucking racist to call black people already dead and only talk about death. So something that's exciting about this song and other songs of Lamar's is I see it as asking to be sung about because Thirsty is also desiring to live on and create this other type of livability through, I would say, poetry, aka hip-hop music, community building, music in general, words, lyrics, people repeating things that you've said, um, and kind of resurrecting and keeping alive these different voices that otherwise get relegated to a space of death or silence, and highlighting who is living and what that livability looks like. So I see this song as part of that larger project that I find in a lot of Lamar's work. Um, and I also appreciate how Lamar doesn't just romanticize this idea of living on through becoming like a pop star, or a hip hop star, or a poet, um, or a literary artist, but also as um, acknowledging that that legacy is complicated because it actually depends on other people's death to a certain extent. And that's something that's kind of fucked up, as long as it's just simple. And it's really messy and it's really murky, and Lamar is not afraid to go there with talking about how history is perpetuated and continues through today, but then also about hope and how we need to build worlds while also remaining very critically aware of the violence on which many of those worlds seem to be predicated. Um, to give you an overview of how the music video functions and part of how I see this working this way. In the verses, Lamar outlines the pain of living in and around racial violence and death constantly. Right? There's references to the ghetto, there's references to different people in his life who have died, there's references to people who have stepped in and shown a care and an ethics that sort of allow livability um, and goes against the narrative of just death. Right? Um, and then in the chorus, um, he switches to a sort of vocoder, technologically mediated version of just asking that he be sung about um, kind of over and over. Um, and it's sort of like a voice coming through the ether, like potentially post or pre-death, right? So it's sort of enacting that, like, I'm going to live on this way. Here are the ways we can live on. And in living on, stop this type of, like, death from being a constant or stop death from see being seen as this preclusion or assumption anymore, right? Um, I noticed in particular, because I do black feminism studies, um, and we can talk about that another time because you're probably like, what the fuck, you're white passing? What do you mean you do black feminism? But we'll talk about that another day for the sake of brevity, I'm working on it, um, that he emphasizes the death of his sister. And, and then in the lyrics of the verses, starts sort of mingling his body with his sisters to critique the extension of white sexism and white male patriarchal thought and how that's enforced and put on the bodies of black men so that they are made to believe and feel that their livability is dependent on them asserting a type of violence and a sexism as well. Uh, while also critiquing the sort of judgment that is oftentimes passed on black women that hypersexualizes them. And that was a really interesting moment to me. Um, again, I've linked, hopefully you've seen by now, um, to the video itself. I'm going to encourage you before I launch into my close reading of Jasper's Expert to pause this video and watch and read the lyrics to Lamar's video. I'll also put the lyrics to the whole thing. Oh, it's a lot of work, but I'll do it. Um, in the comment section below or whatever. So you can just read them if, if listening to it's not your thing. But I do think listening to it is a very different experience. You need to hear Lamar say his words himself. Um, and I think the vocoder in particular is really fascinating. Um, because in one verse section in particular, sorry, I just had breakfast, um, he really goes into a sort of drag performance almost, like saying, you can't walk in my pumps, you know, um, with the sister. And I think that that's one of the more exciting sections to myself. Um, let's see, let's look at my notes and see if I've missed anything. Um, oh yeah, so one last thing that I think I can use to support my analysis of how Lamar uses death, and Lamar has a self-proclaimed fascination with talking through it, is much like in All Right, which is a more famous music video, there's a point in the song where it talks about the album dropping or a beat dropping or a song dropping. This is constant with Lamar, and then all of a sudden there's a gunshot and silence, and then he comes back um, from the dead and continues to talk. And this is something that's just generally kind of fascinating to me. Um, and I think it's a way of sort of enacting a different relationship to death. Um, and then finally, there's a ton of religious references. Obviously, the section we're looking at in particular uses religious references. And I think that something else that Lamar and hip-hop music in general has historically done is it's taken the colonial Christianity that was sort of enforced on different black communities through racial slavery, and it retools it to put pressure on these ideas of calling black people dead, right, or on like what we consider death, or the idea of 
living afterward. Um, there's a lot of play in a lot of Lamar's songs with like demons in heaven and singing um, and a sort of like ululation is actually the word, right? Um, so I think that that's something else to dig into. I'll touch on it a little bit, but that would be another if you want to read one of my papers or um, anything like that. And then, let me think for a second to make sure I'm not forgetting any overview items. Mm. I think that's the majority of what I'll, I'll stop here at before I dig into Jasper's section. Um, all right, so Jasper, to your section, let's reread it. Um, towards the third verse of the song, by the way, if you're looking at the lyrics below. Sometimes I look in a mirror and ask myself, am I really scared of passing away? If it's today, I hope I hear a cry out from heaven so loud it can water down a demon with the Holy Ghost who will drown in the blood of Jesus. Right, so a couple quick observations. If you're looking below, there's actually a pretty clear rhyming pattern. Um, I would encourage you to check out um, Kaplan's book, Rhyme's Challenge, which talks about the history of formal and informal poetry and how rhyme has been used in hip-hop and rap lyrics to create these conversations among artists, right? Um, but we're not going to focus as much on the form today. We're going to look a little bit more at the imagery and metaphors. So I want to focus especially on the last two lines, cry out from heaven so loud it can water down a demon with the Holy Ghost will drown in the blood of Jesus. Um... This demon actually is recurring. It was also in the first or second verse, somewhere along those lines. And the demon is sort of the, like, I've been, you know, when people perpetuate violence against a community for so long, you're taught violence, you're taught revenge, you're taught this, like, anger and rage that could end up taking over. And it's sort of a giving of power while also being a necessary mode of living, right? And that's Lamar's reading of the demon earlier in the song. I actually don't know if I totally buy that or not. I think that there's some ways that that shames anger, and I don't think that's Lamar's intent. I think it's perfectly fine to be anger, and even we all would naturally want to I shouldn't say naturally. We all oftentimes want to wish revenge when violence has been enacted against you. Like, I always tell my students, violence begets violence. What do you expect, you know? Um, so that makes total sense. What's interesting to me, because of my own interest in studying and why I think Jasper emailed me about it, is that the way water is used here um, and the way that we mix the metaphor. So the cry out from heaven becomes water. So a cry or a song becomes something that's incredibly material, right? It's incredibly physical. It's the matter of violence. Black Lives Matter, if you can get my metaphor there, right? And in becoming this physical thing, it becomes a sort of baptism scene, right? Where it drowns the demon, and it's with that drowning that the, um, let me think about that for a minute. Cry out from heaven so loud it can water down a demon with the Holy Ghost. Yep. So the water becomes the physical conduit of what's usually seen as spirit dimension of the Trinity, of like God, Jesus Holy Ghost, right? So the Holy Ghost becomes water that becomes a sort of baptism and then it turns into the blood of Jesus, so a sort of redemption or a savior moment, right? Um, that can help Lamar live on further beyond his present moment. And these uses of Christian and religious motifs are common, and this is part of why I'm very careful to say I reject the traditional church and traditional Christianity. It doesn't mean I don't have a faith-based practice still, or that any type of faith-based practice is like inherently bad or wrong. This is a way of looking at how these types of traditions, which historically were actually used to dehumanize black people and brown people, can be retooled to create a sort of afterlife. I also really think, again, to backtrack, water is becoming a material conduit for rebirth is really crucial historically here. Because if you think about the transatlantic slave trade, something we don't talk about in pop culture is how many lives were lost, not just once arriving here as slaves, but also when ships would cast thousands and thousands of people, slaves, right, but people off the ship, not but people. I hope you get what I'm saying there, right? So there's also this way that water has actually been used to drown in the sense of creating a grave, and here Lamar is turning that on its head and saying that it can be used instead to drown out the demon of racism and create this different type of life through the spirit as a very material, real lived conduit. So the metaphysical of like praise and ululation and um, gospel music and so forth and these different black culture livabilities becomes incredibly material 
yourself through something fundamental to life, which is water. We're mostly made of water. We require water to live, and it goes against the historical use of water, right? And the transatlantic slave trade, again, up through, and you hear this over and over in my podcast, the flint lead poisonings, and in the Detroit water shutoffs. So that's my reading of those last two lines. Um, I think you could go more into it. What about time? Let me check. Yep, I'm just at 15 minutes, um, so I'm going to be quicker now. I would also say the three lines leading up to it before, um, sometimes I look in a mirror and ask myself, am I really scared of passing away? If it's today, I hope I hear a, and then it goes on to those last two lines, right? And I think this is really important, too, because in some ways, it's sort of pushing against the idea that death is the ultimate marker. Right? And it's saying, no, like we live, we live on, and here are the ways we do that, and may we continue to do that through this music. Um, so that's where I'm going to pause. I think you could tear into every single line in this song. I had to listen to it a few times. So some quick follow-up notes. Um, Jasper had asked for a selection of my dissertation, and I'm going to go ahead and send that to him. I kind of see this, Jasper, you've gotten that email. Um, and I just want to open that up to if you're ever like, oh, I'm interested in what you're writing on this, or I want to hear more than 15 minutes of it, don't hesitate to reach out to me. You can visit my website below and put, put in like a note to the contact info there. You can make a comment below on the YouTube video. You can email me at cgrimmer, grimmer is grimmer than the Grim Reaper. Yes, that's how I remind people at uw.edu. Um, but this is stuff that I'm happy to share. I think that knowledge should always be shared and distributed so we can build these types of coalitions. Um, I would encourage you to take this idea and run with it because I think it's perfectly on the tails of the book Don't Call Us Dead. Right? There's this obsession and talk about death and what that means and how it's figured, and again, through water. Um, so those are my main points. Um, a quick couple updates on the vlog status. Um, I do have my own domain now, so just visit chelseagrimmer.com if you want to get more info or kind of keep up with this or you know book any types of consultations or just reach out and have a conversation on these topics. Um, I'm also going to continue to offer some more um, pop culture as poetry close readings. And I also want to challenge you that if you're like, I think that you're claiming that all these other things are poetry is bullshit to say that. And I will totally take you on head on and have that debate with you. Um, I think it's time that we stop seeing poetry as relegated to a specific print high culture and really started seeing how poetry is in all parts of our lives and we ignore it at our own peril and usually when we choose to ignore it it's because it's a not traditional white European form of knowledge that we give respect to and that's just fucking racist, right? and sexist. So we can talk about that another time. Thanks for tuning in. Um, I know probably at least Jasper will watch this, maybe nobody else yet, but I'm looking forward to future podcasts and I'll talk to you later. Bye. All right. I lied. I'm for the first time doing a full edit to the movie by adding a different ending. Um, I kept calling it a podcast, which is interesting. Maybe that means I should switch to podcast form. Um, but I like being able to see people's faces when they talk. So also maybe not. But that's kind of the end of today's vlog. What I didn't get to that I said I would get to is the basics of textual analysis. And I think that's actually really important. That's the thing you learn in like AP English classes and your intro to college writing and all these other, again, class gated, raced gendered spaces. Um, so I'm promising now, and I'm promising you in this video so that I don't neglect it because I'm always getting carried away with the next idea, that when I start the podcast tomorrow, I will start by going over those basics. Um, and that way you'll have at least one tool in your toolkit if you're like, I don't know, I can't afford a fucking college writing class, or I didn't bother in high school to go to AP English classes, and you'll do a little bit better analysis. All right, that's it for today. Um, I hope you tune in again tomorrow if you tuned in today. If not, if you're catching up with these for the first time, visit my website, um, chelseagrimmer.com. Feel free to reach out to me there or via my email, which is also on my website, um, or if you leave a comment, anything, and ask me any questions. I'm happy to make this very much responding to you. All right, thanks. Have a good day.